Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at naming compounds. This video is aimed at those of you in S3 studying chemistry, National 4 or National 5 wishing to revise the basics before moving on to the NAT5 course. Here we have two pictures. Both of these pictures represent compounds. A compound contains two or more elements which have been chemically joined together. When two elements are joined together, the name of the, of the compound will end in the letters I, D, E, for example, sodium chloride, made of sodium and chlorine. When three elements are joined together and one is oxygen, the name ends in I, T, E or A, T, E, for example, magnesium nitrate, containing magnesium, nitrogen and oxygen. Pause the video now and answer this question. How many elements are in each of these compounds? So in the first compound, we have IDE at the end. This means that we have two elements. The second compound, again, we have IDE, so we have two elements. The third compound, we have ATE, so we have three elements. The fourth one, we have IDE, so two elements. And then the fifth one, we have ATE, so three elements. When you're looking at the names of the compounds to try and work out what elements are present, they're named from left to right on the periodic table. So here we have sodium and chloride goes back to being chlorine. Where you have three element compounds, the same rule applies, but the ATE or ITE part represents oxygen. So here we have magnesium, nitrogen, and oxygen. The only exception to the IDE rule is hydroxide. If a compound contains hydroxide, there are three elements. So here we have potassium, hydrogen, and oxygen. Pause the video now and name the elements present in each compound. So in the first compound we have two elements because the name earned in IDE. So we have lithium and fluorine. In the second compound, we still end in IDE, so we have two elements, hydrogen and bromine. We end in ATE for the third compound, so we have three elements. We have copper, sulfur, and the ATE represents oxygen. In the next compound, we end in IDE, so two elements, magnesium and oxygen. In the fifth compound we have ATE at the end so we have three elements. We have calcium, carbon and oxygen. In the last compound although it ends in IDE we have three elements. We have sodium, hydrogen and oxygen. For naming compounds, the element to the left of the periodic table comes first and remains unchanged. For a two element compound, you change the end of the second element to the IDE ending. So here we have iron and sulfur. So iron remains unchanged and the end of the sulfur name needs to become IDE. So we have iron sulfide. Where you've got three elements, you keep the first name unchanged 
and then you change the end of the second non-oxygen ele element to ITE or ATE. This depends on how much oxygen is present, but ATE tends to be more common. So here we've got iron, and instead of turning the end of the name to IDE, we're going to turn it to ATE. So we have iron sulfate. Pause the video now and name these compounds. For three elements, use ATE. So the first example only has two elements, copper and chlorine. So copper will remain as it is, and the end of the chlorine will become chloride. For B, we have two elements. Nitrogen will remain as it is, and the end of fluorine will become IDE. For this last example, we have three elements. So magnesium stays as it is, and the end of carbon we put on ATE. This represents the oxygen which is present. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.